Okay, um, this is for Chem 480 and I'm going to talk about uh, GC, gas chromatography. And here is a GC, this is a Hewlett Packard uh, 6890 series. These were really, really popular, especially like 10, 20 years ago. But just kind of want to go through uh, the components of this GC instrument. So we have an injector here, which I want to go into, uh, the, the actual oven. So you have this whole inside space here that's an oven. Inside it again is a capillary column. The capillary column hooks up to a column or hooks up to the, the bottom of the injector on one end. About 30 meters of column that runs through capillary tubing. On the other end we hook up to uh, right here. This little component right here that I'm putting my finger on is an FID detector. So that's a flame induction detector. Uh, really popular, really sensitive, really, really good for analyzing hydrocarbons. If uh, what I obviously a lot of the technology goes into this oven and controlling the temperatures and doing temperature programming with with the instrument, but you can kind of see it's pretty straightforward. You just got your injector which comes down and connects to the column. You got the sample that goes through the column, which eventually goes to a detector. Detector here that has an electrode in it. The electrode has a, a signal here that goes off into a computer, and then you measure the milliamps of uh, ions that are being created from um, hydrocarbons coming off the column. I do want to spend a minute, uh, we talked about the injector. When you do the injection, you have this like little 10 microliter syringe. It uh, goes through a septum. Let me back up here. Uh, this would go through the septum. You do your injection into the injector and you'd introduce your sample into the system and your sample would run through the whole system until it gets to the detector. We talked about uh, a little bit about this injector, but this is the septa that we talked about, or at least mentioned. So right there, that little that little piece right there is a scepter. Um, it, it's 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 fairly so soft. If you can see, I'll try to bend it. I don't know if you can see me bending it, but it but it bends pretty well. The the whole purpose of this guy is is that when uh, you you puncture through it with a needle. Uh, it will reseal and your injector will stay sealed and you won't get air going into it. If you go a little bit farther into the injector, there's actually a glass liner. So I'm going to try to unscrew this. Uh, there, there's the top of the septa piece. And if I grab what I thought were some... Sorry for the uh, camera going all over the place, but I don't know how else to do this. But there's a glass liner. So you can see this glass liner come up right here. And this is what you inject into. It, it's actually got a uh, void volume in the middle. You inject one microliter when, the, when your GC is running. This thing is probably heated somewhere, you know, about 50 degrees above what's supposed to be the lowest boiling point of your analyte, but, but probably running around 200 to 250 degrees C. And your sample is vaporized or turned into a gas phase when you jump in, when you inject into that glass. Um, heated liner and then obviously there's gas lines that are hooked here and then once your sample is in a gas it's carried onto the column and runs through the column and through the detector and all of that business. Um, in today's lab we are actually doing the determination of impurities in whiskey using internal standard techniques. So we are using this GC FID with a FID detector to do the analysis. Uh, what it entails is is the whiskey sample that we're going to be analyzing today is a real Thompson whiskey sample. You go to the liquor store and you can buy it. It's an American whiskey, uh, so on and so forth. So the first thing we do is we cr create a blank w whiskey sample. And since whiskey is 40% um, ethanol or 80 proof, our blank here is 40% ethanol, 60% water, plus the internal standards added. So we have the internal standard added into the blank whiskey. And then we have a standard that is again 40% ethanol, 20% or 60% water, and then it has all of the analytes added into it plus the internal standard. And then we have the Thompson whiskey, where essentially the Thompson whiskey here is just whiskey sample plus the internal standard. Now if there's analytes there, we should be able to detect the analytes of interest to that we're looking for. But the Thompson whiskey, again, being 80 proof, is 40% ethanol and, and, and about 60% water. So essentially, our standards, the matrix of our standards being 40% ethanol, 
match the sample and that's very purposeful and then we have like an unknown whiskey here too that might be in the analysis but this, that's what we're doing we essentially just go through then and we inject the the blank whiskey the blank um, the, the the standard for the whiskey and then the whiskey itself into our instrument we get the chromatograms we're going to analyze the chromatograms and we're going to determine how much of these impurities are in the Thompson whiskey sample. Now one of the things we have the option to do is, since most of these analytes we're analyzing for are polar compounds. So the, the, the type of column here is a, it's, you, you can see it's a, it's a carbo wax, so it's this, I don't know what it is right here, but you can kind of see if I move, it's an Altec Econo cap, I don't know, like EG or EC wax type column. So this column's polar. Uh, we could take that column out, you would disconnect it from the detector, you would disconnect it from the inlet, you'd wrap it up, and then you'd have a different column here like this, which is a nonpolar column. So if we were analyzing nonpolar analytes, we'd put this nonpolar like dimethyl column into the oven and we'd, and we'd use that for the separation of analytes. Given the fact that the analytes that we're interested in analyzing for in this whiskey sample are alcohols or polar type compounds, we're using a polar compound which just means it has a polar stationary phase on the lining of this capillary column. And part of what you're going to see here is I've actually at some point have done an injection of the standards using both this polar column and a non-polar column and you can even see how the analytes lose up, elude off in different orders based on um, the difference of what type of stationary phase you do in the analysis. So I'm going to leave it at that because I gave you a little bit of, at least you've seen the instrument. I've given you a brief overview of the GC uh, FID, of the, of, the, of, the, of the GC FID instrument that we're using. Kind of the cap comes down, I'll put the injector back together and then you'll get the chromatograms in the Excel sheet and you'll get the paper that describes exactly how the analysis was done. And uh, this will be our last lab of the semester. Thank you.